Welcome back to the Geek Centric Podcast, and welcome to our watch club for Marvel's Hawkeye. Not gonna lie, I look pretty good as a Viking. Welcome back to Watch Club. My name is Nate, and this is our Watch Club for Hawkeye, Episode 4, titled Partners. Am I right? If you're joining us for the first time, this is Watch Club, our weekly review series, kind of like a book club, but way better. Keep in mind, we will be going into full spoilers for this series and the MCU in general, so if you haven't watched this week's episode yet, well, then go watch it and then come right back to join us faster than a speeding arrow. Now, before we all down another slice with Pizza Dog around the Christmas tree, let me introduce you to the incredible hot guys and hot girls joining us today. First up... He's a straight shooter whose aim with the camera is right on target. He's Justin Lawrence. I gotta know, what the hell is with this goddamn Rolex? It's been plexing me all day. Uh, I just need to know. We're gonna get into it. (laughs) We're gonna get into it. Don't worry. But listen, listen. Joining us after taking some time away from her LARPing guild, she's the archer of admiration for all things Avengers. She's AB1, Alyssa, the Black Widow assassin, Balistrary. Oh, wow. I should put that on my driver's license. <laughs> would it fit? I don't know if that would all fit on there. Maybe. Who maybe, knows? Maybe. How are you doing tonight, Alyssa? I am doing well. I'm so excited to be on a uh, watch club with you guys. I've I've enjoyed them so much, and I can't wait to talk Marvel. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun, and I, you know, it, it's good to have you on Watch Club. But for those who might have missed your previous appearance on the Geek Centric Podcast, would you mind letting the geeks know who you are, and also your familiarity with Hawkeye and Kate Bishop? For sure, um, this is my first introduction to Kate Bishop. For sure. I haven't read the comics yet, but I am excited to jump into the Matt Fraction novel. Um, I am part of the Video Dames podcast. Uh, We are on a brief uh, hiatus, as you might have said, from our (laughs) LARPing guild. And uh, there we kind of talk about video games, TV shows, and all that fun stuff. But you can also uh, find me on Twitch playing lots of games, especially Fortnite. So if you're into that, Come and hang out with me. I gotta say, I mean, I know it's a Marvel watch club, so Spider-Man is in Fortnite, and I've never been so tempted to dive into Fortnite. Have you tried it yet? Have you tried the swinging mechanics? How does it feel? Oh, well, I mean, I think it's something that's coming a little bit later. Oh, it's not even out yet? No, Spider-Man is part of the Battle Pass, which okay. means you kind of have to earn our way there. You have to really uh, feel like you earned it. Right. Um, but the swinging mechanics should come probably after the new movie comes out. Ooh, okay. Very dope. Very dope. Well, let's get into this show here. I know technically uh, last week we were at the middle point, but I feel like this episode definitely feels more like a, a middle episode, if you know what I mean. Um, middle part which two. Which we're going to... Right? Middle part two. <laughs> middle part two. Um, the, the lesser part, maybe. But uh, we'll get into that as we as we grapple down this wire uh, and get right into this episode. So let's just kind of dive in. We pick up right from where we left off with the Ronin blade at Clint's throat, followed by an awkward exchange at the dinner table where we see Kate and Clint attempt to explain what they've been up to. Uh, Eleanor sees Clint out where she name drops Natasha, exclaiming that she, too, was pretty damn good at being a superhero Uh, but that you know being good is not enough to keep you alive she asks Clint to forget the case and he says he can't but he promises to keep Kate alive Uh, and after Clint leaves we see Eleanor call someone Uh, and in the elevator we also see that Clint has taken back his Ronin sword he messages his wife asking her to look into Sloan Limited which we learn is a shell company and that Jack is actually the CEO and that he's laundering money for the quote unquote big guy so there is so much to chew on in this first you know first act here uh let's start with a with a very simple question who was eleanor calling i was thinking val was probably that's what i thought yeah i feel Uh. like i feel like that's meant to be sort of the case because you know we see yelena and i I was trying to recall the the post-credit scene like when it was shot it was obviously shot well after uh um the events of Endgame, but it, it looked like it was looked like it was like fall cold. It was you know it could have been mm-hmm. in and around the time that we're, where we are in the narrative with with Hawkeye in and around. So I think it's a fair fair assessment to say that you know she was probably calling Val. The only other person I could think of is Uncle Wilson, but I don't know. Like I don't I don't <laughs> Uncle know. Uncle Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. Oh my god. So I mean, it's it, it, Val's a great call out there. I I thought yeah maybe it could have been. 
Fisk, but I mean, it definitely has to be someone that she doesn't really know that well, right? Because she says like, hey, it's Eleanor. Like normally if you're calling someone then they know your voice, you wouldn't have to say who it is that's calling. Mm-hmm. But um, I like that call out. Like, Justin, are you saying that it's directly linked to the scene that we see at the end of Black Widow? I think so. I where think she gets so. off the phone. Yeah, wow. I, I, I think so. I, I think cool. it's I, I think it's in and around that that same period of time. I'm, I'm trying to think if it if it does make sense. I, I have to watch it again. But in my opinion, it makes sense. So, yeah, I think that's a really good point, because, of course, like to recruit Yelena, the time has to make sense. Mm-hmm. They were definitely wearing jackets. It was fall mm-hmm. outside. I think on top of that, um, Eleanor kind of gives me bad vibes. Yeah, yeah right. More, Jack is more of a red herring to to Eleanor's, I don't know, uh, devious background. So in my mind, it was a phone call to Val to kind of send her group after Clint. Yes. If that makes sense. I, I, I think I think you're right. I think that there's there's groundwork that's being planted here for potentially mm-hmm. a it's almost like a crime syndicate, almost like a something I can relate it to is if you guys have seen Bond Spectre uh, with with sort sure. of corruption. All Kingpin could be a part. Yeah, yeah. Kingpin could be a part of that. And who knows who mm-hmm. else could could potentially be a part of that. Maybe you get a Norman Osborn up in there. Um, I, but wow. I, I feel like there's obviously some shadiness to Eleanor. And I, I actually think that maybe she's the one who's actually running that shell company but uses Jack's name mm-hmm. as a as a sort of decoy right so she's it's another sort of red herring like oh Jack's the bad guy but really it's not it's it's, it's it was Eleanor yeah. all along right sort of thing well I mean it's, yeah they come up with another <laughs> song um, no but it's I mean Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cold when she's talking to Clint like just to drop the Natasha name sure I just and thought she knew was what like, that would mean I, mm-hmm. it, it immediately sort of tells us like Damn, like she's she's evil. I also wanted to just quickly call out I what's with Marvel and these references to hexagons and bees, okay? The mugs that they're all drinking the tea out of. Mm-hmm. Hexagons and bees. Are you trying to get me back on the Mephisto train? What is going on? I don't understand. Because they're they're literally everywhere. They're, even on the chairs they're sitting on, they've got hexagons. Why? 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 Are we gonna get Mephisto in this series? <laughs> yeah, let's. <laughs> we're Nate Fistoing past this one. Move on. Oh my God. Anyways, <laughs> well, back in the apartment, we see Kate attempting yet again to discuss her thoughts on Jack, uh, and Eleanor forces the conversation to change, uh, wanting to talk about an event that she's planning instead. And then we see Jack swooning Eleanor, and Kate. You know, sort of smiling while she's reflecting on the fact that she gets to be with her family this time of year. Now, before we continue, obviously, Kate's been pretty uh, not the fondest of of Jack. So do you think do you think we're seeing her warm up to him here? Like, is that what's happening? Well, with it was very smiles? it was very topsy turvy there. Like she, at that moment, she's like, yeah. you know, hey, yeah, maybe he's not so bad. And then the next scene <laughs> when she's being told that he's running the, the tracksuit mafia. Oh, well, we need to stop him, right? Like it was just, <laughs> it was done. such an easy sort of turn. So I don't know if, again, mm-hmm. that's why I think that it is that red herring that, mm-hmm. that her mom's really behind it because there's this moment where you see that Kate's kind of acknowledging he might not be that bad, right? He, he mm-hmm. might not be that bad. He, he might be charming or he's a total crook and he's just a massive con artist. Who knows? Right. Who knows? His character think- is so bizarre to me. But at that point, at this point now, I'm just like, let it ride. We'll, we'll see what happens, right? We'll, we'll see what happens with that guy. Um, Eleanor has appeared to be such a like positive figure in Kate's life, like supporting her through all of the things that she wants mm-hmm. to do. And obviously financially, she's in such a privileged place. I think that she's just finally happy to see her mom in a good place. Yeah just happy overall Mm -hmm. so when that could potentially negate from her mother's happiness i think she automatically is like no we have to stop this right so for like the storyline totally makes sense and i think you see her in this moment like i was watching it and and when i watched it back i kind of realized like she's not necessarily smiling at jack she's smiling at her mom Mom, she's smiling at how happy her mom is she's smiling at the moment right right? yeah she hasn't seen her that happy in such a long time yeah Mm mm-hmm yeah, and I, I think she just kind of, hopefully we get to see her stay happy. I think it's it's one of those things where it's like, I think this is unfortunately not going to go the best way for Kate. And so to see her, her you know, sort of little dy- dynamic with her mom falling apart throughout the series, throughout the next two episodes, I think it's going to be really tough. I think this is, yeah, exactly that. It's that set up moment of that little glimpse of happiness, a moment where they might seem like a normal family. And now everything is just going to go the opposite direction. So, you know, 
let's wait. We'll wait and see what happens. But they're they're <laughs> setting the groundwork for it for sure. That's it. Um, okay, so then Kate heads over to Clint's apartment to cheer him up and celebrate the holidays with him. Uh, he updates her on what he's learned about Jack and Sloan Limited, and the two attempt to formulate a plan while wearing ugly Christmas sweaters and drinking frozen margaritas. Then, in a quiet moment, we see Clint recant the best shot he ever took, which he says is the one he didn't take. He shares with Kate the, the moment you know he met Natasha and, and she learns of his dark past uh, and confirms her suspicions, which I think we kind of called like, yeah, mm-hmm. she knew he was the Ronin. And so he just kind of confirms that for her. Um, and then after dismissing her, you know, he removes his hearing aid and we see the sort of the flashbacks of kind of the darkest moments of his life, right? Losing his family, his time as the Ronin. And then the moment he lost Nat. So what did we think of this uh, incredibly sort of cheery moment followed by the sad one? I like the juxtaposition of like the holiday quick cut montage getting to know each other moment with this really real emotional performance from Jeremy Renner. I, I thought he actually yeah. did a really good job of just revealing so much as to what goes into the character that he has become and, and that we as as the audience have, have seen him become. Because as we've pointed out and as we talk about this series is that this is such a great experience of time with Hawkeye after just mm-hmm. having these moments here and there throughout the MCU. And for us to take this moment, to take this series and, and really spend our time to not only see the physical uh, ramifications that being a hero and being an Avenger has had on his body physically with him losing his hearing, but now also the emotional toll that it's had on him and post-traumatic stress that it, it, it kind of has left on him. He's he's wrapping himself in juice packs and uh, ice packs all over his body, <laughs> which was so funny. Yeah. And, you know, it's also like just the sad realization that he isn't superhuman. And, and I think the show is just doing such a, a great job with seed planting it and really giving a nice sort of payoff in this scene with Kate and Clint. I think it was it was awesome. Yeah, I think it's a, a really great visualization of how Clint has to live in this reality. Like he doesn't have the luxury to live off planet. He doesn't he didn't pass after Endgame. He's one of the only people left who is human who has to endure so I think showing just how like degraded he is not only with like all the bumps and bruises on him throughout the episodes his hearing loss but also the the turmoil that he's going through even in such a positive time is is really harrowing like I can't imagine being plagued with such like fear of loss and um, just having all of your happy experiences tainted with all of these past memories. So I'm really enjoying seeing Hawkeye go through these things, but it is quite sad as well. No, for sure. And I think it's, I think the, the, it kind of shows you a little bit more into his, his dark past, right? Because we didn't, you know, pre Avengers, we didn't really know who he was, right? He definitely wasn't a hero. He, he says he was a weapon, right? He did terrible things before the Avengers. Then he was mm-hmm. with the Avengers. And then during the, the moment where he lost his family, he, you know, he goes into weapon mode, right? And so he, he comes out of weapon mode. So you have to imagine like the things that he did, he's, he's got red in his ledger as, as Natasha would put it. Yes. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah it was, it was cool, but it was cool to sort of get that from him because again, we don't really have an origin story for, for Hawkeye. So this is kind of where we're getting it. A hundred percent. And it is the origin story. It is the reality of what it is to be this character and what he has endured. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that, yeah, I, I, again, Jeremy Renner killed this scene. It was, it was well so acted. It, it had the right amount of emotional um, cadence to it. That didn't, wasn't like him bawling, right? Like you could see him almost mm-hmm. fighting back the tears, right. And, and trying to be strong as he kind of talked about it. I think he gave us our origin story. I mean, I, I will say as happy as I was to see, you know, these two interact um, around something that wasn't the mission necessarily, like the coin thing and everything was was really fun. But I will say this is kind of this sequence. And then the next one is where the episode does sort of uh, kind of drop to a crawl a little bit. Right. It does slow down uh, quite a bit. Maybe it's a little it's a tad too long. But you're right. The performance that he gives as the payoff for the juxtaposition yeah. of the scene that just kind of. I forgive it for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so Clint sends Kate to have a chat with the colorful LARPers of New York uh, about helping them to get the trick arrows back while he has you know, he has a chat with Ka- Kazi, asking him to convince Maya that she's chasing a ghost. Once Clint gets back to Kate, 
he discovers she's made a deal with the guild to have them retrieve the trick arrows and gather information in exchange for costume materials. And Kate suggests they also make costumes for Clint and her. Um, having now gotten the arrows back from Elsbeth of Deepdale, Clint sa- gets a message from Laura regarding the whereabouts uh, of the watch, and he and Kate abruptly leave to go check it out. Um, so I knew we'd see you know these LARPers again, do you think we're actually, Alyssa, are we going to get to see these costumes made by them? And will Elsbeth ever get that bag back? <laughs> oh, totally. Um, I mean, in the trailers, you do see them at Rockefeller Plaza with the, mm-hmm. their new branding, um, okay. their new purple, beautiful outfits. So, I mean, totally, we'll see it. And if LARPers are one thing, they are committed. Yes. They have incredible commitment. They have yes. to be committed to the story. They have to com- be committed to imagination. <laughs> That's what she said when and, she got I mean, there. <laughs> right? I imagine that like, if they have committed to something, they're going to complete it. So mm-hmm. um, just to track back one second, what did you say her name was? Elsbeth of Deepdale. Elsbeth of Deepdale. And her mm-hmm. her actual name is oh. Wendy Conrad. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I thought it was really strange when she handed him the bag um, and she was like, I really need this back because my wife embroidered it with bombshell on it and it's mine. So I need it back. So I did a little sleuthing. No. And yeah, of course. And Wendy Conrad is bombshell in the Marvel comics who was once tasked with uh, injuring Hawkeye's arm so he wouldn't be able to shoot anymore. So oh, I'm shit. really interested to see if that was just like a maybe like a a play on that her is, name just to right. throw in like a yeah I think it is I think it's to pay respect like if that if that actually materializes to being something in the MCU bravo for a small seed and planting that into something huge but I feel I like mean, I mean it's not the first time yeah I'm I'm definitely gonna circle back we're gonna talk about something next and I will definitely give right. you my two cents I mean, in a moment I will say <laughs> though like. That scene, when I watched it originally, like, now that we've got the context for it, I'm like, at first I was like, well, that seems unnecessary. Why does she have to say, like, it says bombshell? Like, why is that such it's a big mine. deal? <laughs> so I, I agree with you. I think maybe that maybe maybe that does mean something. Maybe we get to see some more of Elsbeth of Deepdale in the future. I do hope <laughs> I do hope that we get, like, as you said, they're committed, right? These LARPers, these, these cosplayers. And I hope that maybe she makes like a few different choices of outfits for them. And maybe. we get like a 90s montage of them dressing up in these like these different One outfits. Right? Another. Yeah. And then, gonna, <laughs> and then you've got like the H mask on there. And then Clint's like, no, 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 no. It's not happening. I love um, that. I would, I would love to see that. I think that'd be super dope. Um, I also think... You know, it does seem like, you know, in the conversation with Clint and Kazi, uh, Clint knows about Maya's past. He's trying to protect her. Do you think it's out? Of, it must be out of guilt, right? For for killing her dad. Like he, he probably sees it as like she's just a kid and he doesn't want her to get hurt just as much as he doesn't want Cater. I guess he understands. He understands. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think he knows what revenge can do, want, do to you. It's like a poison. Right. I think in many mm-hmm. cases, yeah. his experience as the Ronin was sort of out of vengeance. He obviously understands. But what's even more revealing is that he knows like he knows who uncle Wilson is or you know, who, who, who f- the big guy, big dog. Is you keep top. calling him uncle Fat Wilson. man auto repair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we know. We all know. We all know. We all know. What if it's dude, what if it's Mephisto? Mephisto? Oh my God. <laughs> What if they just completely troll us? Anyways, uh, finally, we <laughs> we get to kind of the, the, the big sequence in the episode. Uh, we see Kate and Clint have tracked down the apartment where the Rolex is being stashed, uh, and they discover the apartment belongs to Maya just a little bit too late as she attacks Kate. Uh, meanwhile, Clint discovers he isn't fighting Maya on the roof uh, because she can't be in two places at once, I guess. Uh, and after an incredible battle between... Uh, the four of them, we see Kate manages to fend off Maya with an arrow to the shoulder, and Clint manages to unmask his assailant, and we finally get to see Yelena Belova yes! has joined the show. Uh, so stoked. Uh, the episode ends with, you know, you, we see Kate kind of asking more questions, and Clint reminds her in, in this really kind of sad moment. He says, you're not my partner. He's trying to push her away. Uh, he says she never was. He tells her to go home and says it's over. And then the episode is over. Uh, so before we get to our rating and our predictions, let's talk about this final sequence, uh, which my first question is, let's just get into it. 
Whose watch <laughs> are they going after? And why is it so important to Clint? I personally think it's Laura's watch. Ooh. Um, why? And well, that's a great question, Nate. I'd love to elaborate. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really interesting to me that we're seeing this like kind of secret spy side of Laura just in this like five minute interval where right. she's speaking German in front of the kids. And apparently she does that all the time because her kids are really annoyed by it. <laughs> uh, she has this tracking software where she can track this item. And she's, I was, I was saying when I was watching it, I'm like, wow, she's such a supportive wife. This is like really nice of her to be like, you know what? Do your thing. Miss Christmas. It's all yeah. good. Take care of yourself. Um, so again, I do a little bit of sleuthing because I am getting into the comics, but I haven't quite read everything yet. And not only was Wendy Conrad, who also was known as Bombshell, um, hunting Hawkeye, but he was al she was also hunting Hawkeye's partner, Mockingbird. And Mockingbird's name in the comics is Barbara Morse Barton, who was actually married to Clint. Wow. So I think this could potentially be the MCU's version of Mockingbird, who uh, at the time worked for, I believe, S.H.I.E.L.D. as well as Cross Industries. And we know Darren Cross was from Ant-Man and uh, the first Ant-Man movie. So, I mean, I'm I'm really curious to know, like, how it's possible Maya knew all of this information about uh, Clint's family. But also, like, what is Laura's background if this is her watch? Because it doesn't doesn't look like a man's Rolex. It looks it's like not, a woman's I don't think Rolex. It, I don't think it's hers. I think it does connect to someone that they're both connected to. I think you're right on the money there. <laughs> Their relationship is derived out of their relationship as spies and you know if they're part of mm -hmm. shield and she's got to be part of shield right well she was probably part of shield and then she yeah. she went cooperative right but it, it does make sense though at the same time that it could be hers because what would make her ask for it right like unless it is someone that she also knew there there is some sort of importance to who's connected to the watch so I, i'd be interested to find out who it is i i actually I, I kind of agree with you. I think it very much could be hers. Um, I think it would be really cool. I mean, I would love to get more Linda Car Cardellini in the in the MCU in general because uh, mm -hmm. she's awesome. And so mm -hmm. for her to be kind of just Clint's wife uh, kind of sucks. And I, I think it would be, you know, seeing her speak German, be able to get intel. You know, she, he texts her a quick name and he, she's like, he's like, look this up. And she's got she's getting intel for him. Like mm -hmm. she has access to some stuff and she has some skills. So um, I think that would be really cool if we did get to see more of her, whether it's in in Clint's past or in MCU. What if it reveals uh, that they, that that uh, Laura's a scroll? Oh, Ooh, that would be wait, crazy. What? Dude. OK. All right. OK. Calm down. Like, yeah, we, we talked about a, a couple of the events that were fairly interesting. You know, Elena. Yay. Right. Like we knew she was coming. But like, I got to say, like the, the standout moment for me was seeing, you know, spy mom kick into gear here uh, from from mm -hmm. from Mrs. Barton and, you know, just getting in right into it. So. It was like spy kids. Yeah. <laughs> spy kids. Yo, <laughs> if if his if his kids start going spy mode and then Nathaniel becomes a major player, let's go. Let's go. Um but listen, uh <laughs> we obviously have we have to discuss we have to talk about Yelena. Um and so that's where we're gonna bring up our latest prediction segment called Hit Me With Your Best Shot. Uh, I want you two to hit me with your theories and predict what this reveal could mean for the series. And then once all the arrows fly, we can assess throughout the series to see if you were truly on target. So, Alyssa, I'm going to get you to shoot first. What do you think of seeing Elena in this show and how does that tie into all of what's going on? Oh, dear. Um, I mean, it's hard to say because, like, there's just so many options. <laughs> um, I think that this would be a really great segue into, like Justin was saying earlier, like a Thunderbolts kind of anti-Avengers film or television series where it can really get its own time, um, especially considering, like, Maya Lopez is also kind of walking the line between good and evil, mm -hmm. um, U.S. agent as well, walking that line. Um, it's it's hard to say. I do wish that the three uh, strong females in this show would kind of band together and be part of Young Avengers, which is my number one hopeful <laughs> hopeful guess. But yeah, it's I I don't want to commit to anything. I have no clue. Well, I think you're honestly 
you're kind of you know you we heard in this episode Clint uh, and Kate I was such a wonderful reference to the the fraction comics of the shooting the arrow up and then talking about splitting the arrow in half um, and that's kind of exactly what my prediction is going to do with yours Alyssa here um, because I do really think that we're going to see Yelena and Kate become best friends that's that's so. my prediction because we see in the episode okay so so we we get that moment right where Clint talks about the best shot he ever took was the one that he didn't take. That's yeah, the one <gasps> she didn't take, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's because you see this moment with Yelena where Kate, she that draws her arrow, awesome. she doesn't shoot, and it's yeah. it's literally repeating itself. And I just think it's both foreshadowing and it's also a callback, and I just love it. And I just want them to be friends because they're so awesome. That's a really um, great I entirely, so, I am on yeah. the same page with you. I had it written here. Um, <laughs> yeah. The shot that she doesn't take is probably going to be the best thing that ever happens to her, just like Barton described to her in, in the previous scene, which I think it, it was a perfect foreshadow. And when I saw her and she paused... And then she didn't take the shot. I was like, oh, they're besties now. And that's that's, that's exactly it. what that's meant to be. So so it'll be Ugh. something that'll be seed planted throughout. And, you know, remember, Marvel's in it for the long haul. So they don't need to, like, pump out a Dark Avengers or or a, a Thunderbolts mm-hmm. like next year. They can go five years, maybe maybe three to four years and really seed plant and build it to something. Because at the end of the day, that was the success to a lot of the Avengers. Like Age of Ultron came too soon. Right. But when Infinity yes. War came around, it was boom. It was it was game time because all of that other stuff had happened. And obviously with Endgame being what it was. So I think, you know, Feige knows the journey is, is going to be just as good whenever we get that payoff. Uh, but that being said, yeah, I, I'm totally with you. I think that we're we're seeing the groundwork of of a young Avengers kind of play out here, their own origin story. And I think Clint mm-hmm. Barton might be their Nick Fury or their mentor right you kind of you kind of mentioned that you might be the case yeah but i do think it's really i mean going back to to maya i mean the fight in general the fight choreography like that black widow fight style is just so So awesome how she's like sliding along the ground and stuff like that and doing like flips and i was just like i was so happy to see it i i was i wish she said a line but i get it i get why they didn't for the moment um but i will say like i thought her and maya were gonna be on the same page and they totally weren't. We see her punching and kicking her away. Uh, so it's like, you know, is it going to be an enemy of my enemy situation for them? Or is it going to be for, you know, Clint? Are we going to see them team up, as you said? Um, I just think one thing I will say really quick before we we get to our final thoughts and score. It's like we only have two more episodes. <laughs> Like, yeah. I know Echo has her own series that maybe some of these threads are going to pay off in. But it feels like we don't have enough time for all this. I don't know. We have 80 minutes. I think that the way that the Marvel kind of universe is going towards is going to be more of these extended TV series, six part or eight part or what have you. Um, Because one, it makes them a hell of a lot of money. Sure. And two, um, I think it's just so much of a better way to connect with these characters. Like if we had this in a film, I don't think I would be as connected to Maya or Kate, but if we just continue to see like more announcements of these kind of side shows, I will watch every single one of them. Let's go. Let's <laughs> it, go. It mirrors comic runs very, very well. Totally. In terms of like episodic content. So I think that it's, it's the, like they're saying this is going to lead into Echo's series, right? So it, there's right. no Hawkeye season two. It's Echo. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I like that idea too that it, there, right. okay. th- some things don't necessarily need a season two it's picked up by another series and that story can continue. So, but that Mm -hmm. being said, I think that they do know that there is a better strategy of storytelling with episodic content than that in movies. And it is about gauging what should be a movie and what should be a series. Eternals would have probably been a better series than, I think so too. The Falcon and the winter soldier would have been a better movie. So, you know, taking those words right out of my mouth, Justin, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, were there any other uh, shots you wanted to shoot? Any more arrows that you wanted to let loose before we we move on to our our overall thoughts and final score? Well, the reference of the big guy only only alludes more yeah. that we we may be getting a kingpin payoff at some point of some some sort of kind, whether it's his name or something. Because I don't know, I don't think it's any coincidence that Feige in press conference for for No Way Home said that you know if Daredevil comes back and when he comes back, it will be Charlie yeah. Cox. And we know Spider-Man's just around the corner. He's doing press for Spider-Man. Amy Pascal has this sort of smirky smile on her face. It's like, 
It's probably <laughs> going to happen here. And and in that same month, and in the, actually within that same week, we'll get the reveal of potentially Kingpin. That's not coincidental. That is complete strategy and planning and hopefully not having anything spoiled between now and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, regardless, I just want more... Hawkeye, I want more Maya, I want to see Fisk, I want to see all of it. Just give me more, uh, and I think Marvel is on track to do that. Let's move into our our overall thoughts and our final score. Um, I want to know your overall thoughts and your final score, which for this episode, we're going to be rating on a scale of one to five Black Widow assassins. Oh. Alyssa, we're going to start with you. Um. That- I would give the uh, the ending five, but <laughs> right. I would give the whole episode maybe like three and a half Black Widow uh, death, death Stars. Wh- whatever. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Thank God I'm Black not the Widow. only one. See, Nate, it's not just me. You come up with these like convoluted like. <laughs> I gotta like write it down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Black Widow um, assassins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I really enjoy the series as a whole. Um, and this episode really kind of fueled my favorite part of the series, which is. Uh, showing a really great platonic relationship. So I really appreciate that this series is not kind of romanticizing Clint and Kate's relationship. It's not making like a father daughter either. It's really a great portrayal of a, of a buddy, buddy, uh, kind of like a buddy, buddy comedy in a really platonic way. So yes. I overall five, this one, maybe like a three. <laughs> Um, I don't think the math works out, but it's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, I I would say that this was this was an episode very much as you described it, Nate, a a part two middle with last week's episode. As I was saying, I gave it a four point five, and here I, I would say that this is probably a four point five. But with these two episodes together, it's a five out of five. I I feel like this sure. helps to kind of move the story. This is where we're starting to see the snowball that we've we've talked about like we're we're rolling into it and we're we're getting to something um and it feels it feels gratifying i, I love this obviously the ongoing uh as Alyssa said platonic very uh buddy cop f- you know super fan kate bishop enjoying her time being a being a hero right like just taking it all in mm-hmm. the larping scene and the and the larping people i think i could have done without <laughs> uh only Aww. because well only because like i like the comedic value but they didn't really do anything but that and plus just be really useful to the plot, right? Like they were just right. really convenient uh, to get mm. the the arrows and, and it just felt sort of shoehorned in as to some sort of side mission that, that she had to go do to justify getting right. these arrows back. So I, I felt like that element could have been without. But that being said, this episode gave me everything I wanted. It, it had some emotional punch. It had some great action moments, uh, great sort of payoff for getting me excited for the next two episodes. So yeah, uh, 4.5 out of 5. Wow. Okay. Um, that's higher than I thought for this one. Um, but yeah, this episode, again, it felt like the middle of the movie more than, than I think the middle of the series, um, which I think is, I think is going to go down as the best episode, um, of the show. We, we get the big reveal that's going to push the story into its final two episodes and we get that big, big moment. But I just think, yeah, the episode just really drags in terms of pacing between character moments and action with a lot more character growth, which is awesome. Um, but it's just not as balanced as as last week's episode was, um, which I thought was peak Marvel. Um, I still think, you know, what we did get in terms of like the really heartfelt moments, the dark moments with Clint and him sort of uh, his performance in, in showing that was phenomenal. The fight choreography at the end of the episode alone brought my score up from a 3-5. I really was ready to give it a 3-5. And then as soon as I saw Yelena and her fighting style and everything, I was like, ah, they they got me. Um, So, you know, more awesome, grounded Marvel storytelling. Um, But I'm going to give this episode a solid 4 out of 5 Black Widow babies. Uh, No, Black Widow assassins. (laughs) Black Widow Death Stars. (laughs) That's it. Um, Well, before we wrap, Alyssa. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, can you let our wonderful listeners know where they can see and hear more of the dope content that you make yet again? And we'll make sure we have all the links in our show notes. No, fuck that. A hundred percent. Yeah. We've got, um, streams going every Monday and Friday at twitch.tv slash it's your girl, Alyssa. And you can find video dames, the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Very cool. I mean, as soon as. 
tell me how to get Spider Man in the game, and I will. I'll be there. Okay, because I've I heard mean... <laughs> it's better. I've heard the Spider Man in Fortnite is better than the Spider Man in Marvel's Avengers in the in the Square Enix game, which is crazy. It it does look much better. Yeah, That's I mean, crazy. you could either earn your way there or you could buy your way there. And I mean, oh, you want to play okay. with me? Yeah. Let's no, do you've, it. You've, <laughs> <laughs> you just that's you said the magic words. I'll just spend the money. It's, oh, it's fine. So much. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Watch Club. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to us wherever you like to listen to podcasts, if you haven't already. And if you want to write into the show with your thoughts or predictions on the shows we cover in Watch Club, well, here let me let me flick this coin over to our infamous Ronan uh, to to tell you how you can reach us. You caught it? Did you get yeah, it? I just caught it. There, okay. I just caught oh, it. Oh, wow. I caught it. <laughs> that was great. You see that? The hand that gestures. Awesome. <laughs> they can reach us at wearegeekcentric at gmail.com. That's wearegeekcentric at gmail.com. They can also reach out to us on Twitter at geekcentricyt or on Instagram at wearegeekcentric. Reach out to us on Twitter. Be cool. Be, be a cool, tech-savvy person. Uh, keep in mind, we also have a ton of other episodes covering the latest and greatest shows uh, and movies out now, including our spoiler-filled reviews for Disney's Encanto and Ghostbusters Afterlife. And coming up, we'll have our Spider-Man rewatch episodes, including discussions around the Toby and Garfield Spider-Man movies and another one centered around our beloved Tom Holland Spider-Man, along with our predictions for Spider-Man No Way Home. And, of course... We will be covering Spider-Man No Way Home with a spoiler-filled review coming for you right after its release. So please subscribe so you can listen to all that Spidey goodness. Alyssa, are you stoked for No Way Home? Oh, my gosh. I think I have three sets of tickets. I have to decide when I want to go. <laughs> when and where, right? I know. I got to exactly. return a bunch of tickets, too. I feel bad. But listen, people who get there on the day of who don't think they're going to get great seats you're going to get some great seats. So look forward to that. <laughs> um, Justin, Alyssa, thank you so much for joining me for this watch club. And as we say, good, good boy, boy, pizza, pizza dog. dog.